Hey guys, it's Zach again. Um, so you've already seen this image and I'm not really doing a new tutorial. This is more of a quick tip since the last tutorial was really long. I was really kind of just doing everything in kind of a convoluted way. So as you can see, I just cleaned up my image again. This time it didn't take too long, but I would like to go over a couple new settings. Um, I set my anti-alias mode to morphological instead of standard and I think it just gives a much smoother line result. And I did find out what these color threshold and H range thresholds did. Well maybe not like technically speaking, but remember how I was talking about how the red would overlap the black? The uh, white or the color threshold actually helps get rid of that. I think in the lower settings, the black will continue to overlap it. On the downside though, you do get some black speckles on the red, but I think that uh, not having the red overline the outline is a uh, better, or you know, a bigger pro than the small speckling you get. But you know, just try to balance it out so that you can get close as you can to having the best of both worlds. And I mean that's all I really wanted to show up on the cleaning. Also in the last video I made a mistake. Uh, the reason why my brush was so elongated was because the aspect ratio was really screwed up. Uh, when I had set the DPI to 300, um, usually they're connected, like they've always been connected for me where if I type in 300 here it'll change to 300 here. But for some reason in the last video it wasn't, uh, they weren't set to correct to each other. So I changed that to 300 and that one remained at like, I don't know, 72 or something, creating like a really, really bad pixel ratio where this was like 3000 something and that one was only like 500 something pixels. So pretty much the pixels were like straight lines rather than, you know, square pixels. So that resolution was really screwed up and make sure that you, uh, pay attention to that in your own work because you don't want your your uh, resolution to look like that. As you can see it looks a lot better than it did in the last video. It actually it looked really scraggly in the last video because of that. Alright, so I just want to go over a easier or a way to color in this image and I guarantee it will be faster because the last video was like 45 minutes long. I'm hoping I can probably you know, color this in in about five minutes or so versus the 20 minutes it took. So without further ado, I'll just get started. I'm just gonna sort of modify my interface. So I downloaded the new version of OpenTunes. Not really new, but I think it was 1.02 rather than 1.0. And it kind of fixed the crashing on startup problem that I have whenever I like create a custom interface. I know how to fix that. I mean, it only takes like five seconds, so it didn't bother me too much. But now I feel like I have a whole heap of other problems where like my controls will lock up and other things like that. And I will have to exit out and I can't save or anything. So I actually kind of just wish I kept the old version. So yeah, be careful when downloading updates. Maybe I'll try to keep an eye on it and talk about bug fixes and new bugs and see if you it'll be worth your while to download them or not. Uh, yeah, I'll probably make some videos on that as well. The palette. Kind of space it again. The style there. Alright. So like I said, this isn't really a tutorial. I'm debating if I should just remake the other tutorial entirely because it was way too long, but like I did in the last video, I'm just gonna select all of these and delete them. Take a second, all right, cool. All right, now I'm gonna start coloring this. And okay, so what I did last time was I spent a crap load of time trying to fill in the white gaps that were uh, all over this image. And I'm using this image again, one, because I didn't want to draw anything else, and I already have it, and it's a decent example, and two, because it also had a lot of white gaps, so it kind of helps. Um, it's a good example for it. So 
I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this entire character in with a neutral gray. And this might seem kind of weird, but this is a technique commonly done in like movies and such. I was thinking the other day that they, they pad down green screen characters or chroma key things, usually with a neutral gray. Like if you go into Premiere or After Effects, you have the option to sort of pad out your your uh, green screen elements with a neutral gray where it sort of like feathers out the edge with a gray and it helps it blend into the scene better. So the uh, idea behind this is if I fill in all of the white gaps, or if I fill in the whole thing with a neutral gray, all the white gaps will be filled. And therefore, when you color it in, you're not gonna have that weird, um, the weird white gaps look, because if it's a neutral gray, it'll blend into the other colors and the outlines better. Therefore, um, you know, it won't look weird. It will look like your brain will make it, make up for that difference and make it look like it's been fully colored in rather than the white gaps which are way too high in contrast and you'll notice them you'll, you'll see what I mean here in a second so I'm just gonna create a new palette I'm just going to make it like a kind of darkish gray not not black and then I'm gonna grab the bucket and have this set to rectangular engine areas and I'm just gonna select this entire character and boom now it's colored in with a neutral gray, and that means that every single white gap in here has also been colored in. And then I'm just going to sort of iterate down on the colors real quick. So I'm just going to make a skin tone. Oh, and cool note, there was a comment on one of my videos that said, you know if you press the auto apply button, that all of the changes on your, uh, on your drawing will be made dynamically? I mean, that's really obvious. I just missed this button. I don't even know how I missed it, but for all of you just like face palming while watching me do it uh yeah here's the auto apply button i know how to use it now and also if you also didn't notice definitely use the auto apply button all right so now i'm just going to color this in actually before i do that i think i'm going to with the pen tool sort of make red lines for the indication of where the white will be but no outlines like I said I probably should have done that on paper but I can do it now it doesn't really matter and then I'm gonna set this to normal and start coloring this in so just like last time I'm just gonna color in everything I can see some of the colors might become more apparent as I work for which ones they ought to be and like I'm not being too picky about the colors since I have like I can always change it later and auto apply makes it easy to do so just color all this in Alright, looks good on the skin. Now back to the hair. I'm pretty much in color it the same way I colored it last time. Said, I'm hoping to maybe color this in in like maybe five minutes or so. I mean, a man can dream. But I mean, at least way faster than last time, which took forever. And yeah, like after reading that or looking at that last one, I realized I'm probably not going to do any more tutorials without a script. I'll at least have somewhat of a uh, guideline outline in front of me to show you know what I should be covering at each time because I don't want these to take too long
All right, I think we're looking pretty good here. All right, but as you can see, we don't really have like the white gaps anymore. It's just coloring in like normal. Just gonna make uh, another light desaturated blue. And then a darker one. And just stick that here. Now I'm gonna select this alpha color, which is color zero. Just yeah, note that color zero is not white. If you want white, you're gonna have to make a white yourself because color zero is alpha, meaning that if you have a layer behind it, you'll be able to see it. So like when you're first working on it, it will look like white, but uh, if you have a background, then you're gonna see the background through their eyes and you don't really wanna do that. So, you know, make sure that you make a new white. Do not uh, use color zero to represent white. Even though it might look like white, this checker pattern represents a clear alpha. All right, so I'm gonna go set the mode to lines and just try to get rid of all the red real quick gosh it doesn't stop doing that Uh, that looks like it for the skin Up to the hair. You know, I actually think it looks kind of cool with all the outlines is red. I don't know. That does look kind of cool. It'd be a nice drawing style for this type of artwork. All right, so as you can see, I got through this coloring a whole lot faster than I did last time. All right, now I'm just gonna make one for white. Color this in. Grab the skin, go to lines, and here are these red lines. All right, so we've pretty much got this thing colored in now. And like I said, that didn't take very long at all. I was being weird in the last video, and it took way too long, but I just wanted to show this, this tip rather than going in and trying to fill in the white gaps yourself. Just fill the whole thing in as a neutral gray, and then you can mess with it. See, like that. Now there's a bunch of white gaps. If I change this color to white with auto apply on, now it looks really bad. But as I start to lower the color, the more neutral it gets, the less you notice it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a separate gray for the eyes real quick so that it's not affected. You can just click and drag and fill these kind of things in, like so. And maybe this time I'll make the eyes like brown or something. And then go in with the white and just fill that in like so. And perhaps making this gray a black, like it depends on what you want. But I think actually making it a black looks better. But, ta-da! And now with auto apply on, I can just sort of dynamically change these colors real quick. 
just to make them look a little bit better. All right, not too bad. All right, looking pretty good. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about was making the the process of coloring the lines a lot easier and with less fumbling and stumbling and all that good stuff. So yeah, this is just a tip on filling the whole thing in with gray before you go in to color it. So I hope you learned something and I also hope that you didn't start a whole project trying to fill in the white gaps the way I was trying to do it. So yeah, I'll see you next time guys. Peace out.